Ireland on her day at coast. Peace and prosperity. But not enough of the first to make the second a boy. And to the Irish, one of their great men. With the possible exception of Paderewski, no artist has come to represent a people so completely and so well as this man. John McConnell. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Valley. And in return for those very flattering words, let me wish you an Irish wish. May the chicken never be hatched that will scratch on your grave. Thank you, Mr. McConnell. And may you be half an hour in heaven before the devil knows you're dead. <laughs> but if that's the game we want to play, Mr. Valley, try this toast on one of your girlfriends. Here's to myself and one other. And may that one other be she who drinks to herself and one other. And may that one other be me. And now... May we do away with the toast and get on with the music? We certainly may. Your accompanist, Mr. Snyder, tells me that this is the first time you've ever sung in public on St. Patrick's Day. That seems strange. How did it happen? Well, I've always been at banquets on St. Patrick's Day, listening to per fervid oratory about what a marvelous place Ireland is and what wonderful people we Irish are. But I think what makes all the world lovely Irish is their great, unfailing sense of humor. They can see a funny side to almost anything, and I know. Their reputation for wit is proverbial, but some of the funniest remarks that I heard at home in Ireland weren't meant to be funny at all. I remember some years ago, I was motoring the west of Ireland, far off the beaten track where signposts were conspicuous by their absence. We lost our way several times, and our tempers too, I think. At last, I stopped an old man on the road and asked him to direct us in the direction of Ockram. He gave us detailed instructions. Then facetiously, I asked him, why have you no signposts around here? He looked at me as if he was pitying me for my crass ignorance. And he said, the boy, what would we be wanting signposts for? Sure, everybody knows their way around here. And now for the music. I'll sing the garden where the praties grow. It's an old camellia, and incidentally, praties are potatoes. Have you ever been in love, me boys, or have you felt a pain? I'd sooner be in jail myself than be in love again. For the girl I loved was beautiful, I'd have you all to know. And I met her in the garden where the praties grow. She was just the sort of creature, boys, that nature did intend to walk right through the world, me boys, without the Grecian bend. Nor did she wear a sheen, y'all, I'd have you all to know. And I met her in the garden where the praties grow. Says I, me pretty Kathleen, I'm tired of single life. And if you've no objection, sure, I'll make you my sweet wife. She answered me right modestly and curtsied very low. You're welcome to the garden where the praties grow. She was just the sort of girl, boys, that nature did intend to walk right through the world, me boys, without the Grecian bend. Nor did she wear a sheeny on, I'd have you all to know. And I met her in the garden where the praties grow. Says I, me pretty Kathleen, I hope that you'll agree. She wasn't like your city girls that says you're making free. She says I'll ask me parents and tomorrow I'll let you know if you'll meet me in the garden where the braties grow. She was just the sort of creature, boys, that nature did intend to walk right through the world, me boys, without the Grecian bend. Nor did she wear a sheen, y'all, I'd have you all to know. And I met her in the garden where the praties grow. Parents, they consented, and we're blessed with children three. Two boys just like their mother, and the girls, the image of me. And now we're going to train them up the way they ought to go, for to dig in the garden where the praties grow. She was just the sort of creature, boys, that nature did intend to walk right through the world, me boys, without the Grecian bend. Nor did she wear a sheen, y'all, I'd have you all to know. And I met her in the garden where the praties He's John, I've been reading in the papers that you may be asked to run for the presidency of the Irish Free State. 
Is that correct? Well, I have not had any official invitation, but so very many of my friends in Ireland had written to me to throw my hat into the ring, I cabled to my son in Dublin to find out if I am eligible for the position under the new constitution. Of course, I would be very honored and proud to receive the call from my native land, and I'm happy to be even considered for the exalted position. If the people of Ireland want me, I will go. And now I'll sing you a hymn to St. Patrick, which I learned at school in far off of Lone as a boy. All right. Dear Saint of our isle, on us thy poor children bestow a sweet smile. And now thou art high in thy mansions above, on Aaron's green bodies look down in thy love. On On Aaron's green valleys, on Aaron's green valleys, look down in thy love. Ever blessed and deep end of the sweet land of our birth, where the shamrock still blooms as when thou wert on earth, and our heart shall yet burn wheresoever we roam, for God and St. Patrick and our native home, for God and St. Patrick for God and St. Patrick, for God and St. Patrick, and our native home.